Hey, I'm 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 about to call you.
Listening to the cost show today is uh, <clears throat> November the 11th, 2020. It is a historic, very historic uh, date. It is a very uh, historic uh, date. November 11, 1918 was when the First World War came to an end. Uh, uh, it's a very important day. Uh, November 11, 1918 at 11 a.m. Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, so it is celebrated around the world. And I believe it is the same day here the U.S. celebrates uh, Veterans Day. So I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to every one of you. It depends where in the world you are. Very good to be here. Good morning, Boakai. Yeah, good morning, Costa. And good morning to our many listeners across the globe. It's good to be with you. Yeah, it's uh, definitely good to be here. <clears throat> okay, folks. Uh, some very interesting developments. Um, so, the government of Liberia has received the autopsy report on uh, Nyeswa. They have it. They've had it for days now. I mean, for at least almost two weeks, they've had it. Uh, and of course, as you may know, the autopsy was conducted to determine how he died. Cause of death. Autopsy cannot determine who killed the person. No way it cannot. But they can determine how he died. That is what the autopsy has done to, 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 to discover. Now, because according to our information, the autopsy report concludes that 
there was foul play that Yeshua was murdered, as we all knew. So, the dilemma with which the government was now presented, St. John Thompson says there was foul play, is that brother, they must produce the killer. Sure. If somebody was killed, according to the autopsy re re report, that means there must be a killer. Yeah. And so the government needs to find a killer. That killer has to be anybody. A scapegoat. You know what a scapegoat is? You do something and then you want to blame it on somebody else. A scapegoat. So the, the government cannot publish the autopsy report that concludes that Yinswa was killed without finding the killer. Because the government knows that if it does not find a killer, the Liberian viewer will continue to believe that the government is the killer. But we all know the government killed him. So there is absolutely no way they're going to present somebody else to us and say that person killed him. So this is what the government has done. Yesterday, officially, the government proceeded to charge the late Emmanuel Yinswa's girlfriend, his girlfriend of many years, they charged her, Musu Lila Kekula. They charged her with murder. Murder. If there is a murder, if somebody was murdered, then there must be a murderer, right? Yeah. So the government cannot afford to not produce a murderer. So Samuel Twist sat down for long and, and said, oh, I have an idea. Let's destroy the girlfriend's life. Who, who cares? Let's charge them with murder. I mean, these boys can murder people. So you mean to charge somebody with murder? You think there's anything for them? That's absolutely nothing. Lila, poor Lila, has been officially charged with murder. But here is what's going to interest you. It's not just her. Tikon Williams, a good friend of the late Yeshua, who lived in Yeshua's house. Not that Tikon didn't have anywhere to live, but Yeshua said, Look, guys, I, I live in this big house. You know, come here and stay here with me. Tikon Williams is in police detention, custody, as we speak. So is Dr. Red. These are two personal friends of the lit, Yin Swa, who lived in his house. Now they're wondering what, how to charge them. They want to charge them with conspiracy to commit murder. But they're saying that this girlfriend to Yin Swa of five years and the friends killed Yin Swa and threw him out from upstairs, down. That's what they're saying. So the government has to, they, they have to come up with something. They can't just say, they can't just publish an autopsy report that concludes that there was foul play. They must go further to state that Yeshua was murdered by someone and to deflect and to shift the accusing finger that is being pointed at them, they must find someone who did it. They're not going to say this bill to it. They're not going to say it's because of the audit of the National Port Authority, the NPA audit. That, that, no, they're not going to say that. So, they're saying it is the girlfriend and the friends. So, my people, you need to pray for Lilai. You need to pray for Tikon Williams. You need to pray for Dr. Ray. These guys are so, so terrible, terrible. They've reached the point where there is absolutely nothing the CDC government will not do. Molly pass away, that's a good question. What could possibly be the motive for which Lee Lai, a girl who did it, this guy for five, no, let, me, let me tell you something. If you live with me in the house, if you are my girlfriend, you sleep in the bed with me, you cook for me, if you want to kill me, would you have to go through all that headache? 
to hit me with something on the head and op open the door from upstairs and throw me down. No. There are other subtle ways which you could use, I mean, which you could use to kill me. Mm -hmm. No! Besides, what could she possibly stand to benefit? Stephen Johnson, that's a brilliant question. There's something, every time somebody commits murder, there is a motive. People just don't kill people just because they want to kill people, except that person has a mental issue. Except they're sick in the head. But almost always, when somebody kills somebody, especially in a premeditated murder scenario, there always is a motive. And behind that motive, there is an incentive or a benefit which the person who commits the killing or murder uh, has. So if I kill you, what do I stand to benefit? That is the situation. Hmm? That is the situation. What does Leela have to benefit? Tico and Dr. Red live in the house with him. What do they stand to benefit? Was he auditing them? Did he audit his friends? Of course not. Did he tell Leela he didn't want her? Did Leela have an insurance policy? Or did, 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 did he make his will in Leela's name? Clearly not. The man was a married man. Did he have any insurance policy, that life insurance, that Lila would stand to benefit? Clearly not. So why would she kill him? And if she wanted to kill him, why would she kill him in a manner in which he was killed? Makes absolutely no sense. But CDC, the government of George Weir, and the actual killers, Bill Troy, Samuel Troy, Nathaniel McGill, they would have you believe that Lila, this girl who... Those who know her say cannot kill a fly is the one who conspired with Deacon Williams and Dr. Red to murder this guy in cold blood and throw him out the, the door from upstairs. They want you to believe that. And you really want us buying that idea? They want us buying that thing? Uh, there are people, stupid would buy it, not us. <laughs> we would never buy such a theory. It is their people who would buy that. Look, let me tell you something. They want to destroy these people's lives. What guy? Do you know what it means to get charged with murder? Now, of course, their problem would be getting past the grand jury. Now, now that they've charged Lila and they're looking to charge Deacon Williams and Dr. Red, they got to bring them before a grand jury. Now, the grand jury comprising what? What's the number of a grand jury? 24, between 15 to 24 people. The grand jury would have to listen to the arguments from the government, the reasons for which the government charged them. That's what a grand jury does. Then the grand jury would have to determine whether there's any merit in the charge before the grand jury indicts. If the grand jury does not indict there is absolutely no way they can proceed. They, they can proceed on to trial. So their fate now rests in the hands of God first and the grand jury. Now I don't know whether the grand the grand jury has been sequestered, but if any grand jury member or potential grand jury member is listening to me, I say do not indict those people on their frivolous charge. They are scapegoats. You do not want to be part of indicting innocent people based on a murder charge with no evidence whatsoever. What is the evidence? They have nothing. Absolutely nothing. They have nothing. They're going to say, oh yeah, Lila was in the house with a man and the other, and Dr. Ray was in the house with a man. So if you're in the house with somebody, you kill a person, if the person got murdered, that's it? You murdered the person? Do you think if Leila and those friends that murdered the guy, they will, do, they will go through all that headache and they will not run away from the country? You think they will go through all of that? Samuel Twe is the one who came up with this idea, according to the police. Senior ranking police officers. They said Twe. And guess what? The people, the police officers who were investigating this, 
They, they say they can't write a report. You know, they can write a report to charge the people. Yeah. They told their bosses, we are sorry. We can't write this report. You want us to write a report to say that you will murder this guy? And we see no evidence to, to the effect to support this. We can't write a report. You know what the senior police officer, officers did? One on one. What's her name? Sadatu Reeves, eh? Yeah. Sadatu Reeves, one or two and one or three. They took the report and they, they, they took it, they took over the case and they wrote the report themselves. Look at that. I'm telling you, Boaka. The police investigator said, the police investigator said, we are sorry we cannot write this report. What are we writing the report based on? Based on what? Based on the fact that Lila was loving to the man, so she killed the man, so that means every time somebody is loving to somebody and the person gets killed, that means you, you I mean, what do we base this report on? They say, okay, fine, we will write a report. Sadatu Reeves, 101, 102, and 103, the three of them sat down and they wrote this report Basically seeking to destroy these people's lives. And they themselves know that these people did not kill these people, but they are going along with it. They extend to which a Liberian man would go to keep a damn job. Mm. Hey man, the country seconds me. The country. Look, look, I have been having terribly, terribly depressing days. Look, I've reached a point. This is my conclusion, folks. This is my conclusion. And I'm going to say this to everybody today. I want you to listen to me very keenly. We have a choice. We have a choice to either continue to stand up and fight because we are not fighting. To fight. Mm. Tens of thousands of us come out and protest and bring this man to his knees. Or we sit down and allow him to destroy the country. It is as simple as that. Including those of you who are too good to protest. Those of you who have too much to protect. Those of you who are too educated. Those of you who have a big house, a nice house. Those of you, you have a choice. To either stand up to fight this man and his people. Or you keep quiet, sit down in your homes. Lecture everybody on Facebook or in 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 in, in 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 some cases, some of you don't even talk about what's happening in the country publicly. You're afraid to do that. We have a choice. Keep quiet. Let him stay in power. That goes to the opposition people. You're not ready. I'm sorry, you're not ready. Mm -hmm. This when Charles Taylor was in office. And Charles Taylor had done all the madness he had done. What did Ellen Johnson Shirley do? She came to Washington, D.C. to lobby. To influence U.S. foreign policy on Liberia. She didn't fight Taylor only in Liberia. She didn't even fight Taylor in Liberia. Because Taylor got to a point where he didn't care. People were getting missing. They were murdering people. They were doing all kinds of things. You are not ready. This particularly goes to the opposition. You either come to America to lobby, you get the Americans to read the riot act to Georgia and his people, or you sit down there and watch people get murdered. You watch them carry out wanton stealing like the $30 million for the food distribution they stole, like the $30 million for the, the, the $25 million for the map of exercise they stole. Like all the other money that they're stealing, that the violation of the law, like killing people overnight, you sit down and you let that happen. You have a choice. A choice to let George Weah steal the election in December or to fight him tooth and nail. A choice to let George Weah continue to destroy the country, scare people into silence and submission. Or stand up and risk it all and fight him. You're not ready. It is as simple as that. All this nonsense we are doing on the cost so we are wasting our time. Let me tell you something, folks. I am convinced that all this talk we talk here, exposing terrible things the government 
has done and is doing. It's a waste of my damn time. It's a waste of Bwaka's time. Mm -hmm. We're wasting our time. We provide all this damn information for nothing. No. You know, the other day I was doing a podcast about two days ago. And I read this comment. There are thousands, thousands of comments that come through or hundreds of comments while the podcast is happening. And I saw this comment from this person. Oh, I'm here for the G's. I was so offended. I nearly ended the damn podcast. All the things we talk about, you call that G's? That's it? You call that G's when people are getting murdered in the country? You call that G's? Mm -hmm. When millions of dollars have been stolen right in front of your eyes and you see it, you call that G's? That's what you call gossip? And you're laughing, you're making, you're making light of it, you're funny. This is a frivolous thing to you? You call it Jesus? The people are not serious. The Liberian people are not worth it. You're not worth it. The things that happen in our country, if they were happening in other countries, Georgia government would be on its knees by now. Hundreds of thousands of people or tens of thousands of people would be on the streets by themselves. But you are not serious. Every damn day we come here, we open our mouth, we talk, 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 so, so nonsense. You only listen to it, you don't even, you don't, to show you how unserious you are, you don't even make noise about it on social media by yourselves. You are a useless bunch of people. That is why the government treats you the way it treats you. One government after the other. They care your mind, you will stay not talk. They do their want, you will stay. What kind of people are you? $30 million for food distribution. Nowhere, nothing. You set your damn selves down, you don't do shit. $25 million stolen on map of exercise, you don't do shit. Nothing. You can't find Liberian dollars in circulation, you don't do shit. Four auditors murdered in mysterious circumstances. You don't do shit. Nothing. Police beating people. Uh, police officers slapping journalists. You don't hear anything from the press. You, you don't do shit. Hmm. Tell me, what kind of people are you? You don't waft my headache. Waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning and sitting out here and talking to you. You don't waft shit. You the Liberian people. Who you waiting for? The second coming of Jesus Christ or Prophet Muhammad? You waiting for them to stand up to fight for your rights? Who you waiting for? Every damn day, the government, you know, you know, I see some of you celebrating uh, the victory of, of Kabina Jana in the Echo War School. Are you stupid? Do you seriously think that George Weah is going to pay attention to what the ECOWAS code said? That Kabina Janet should be given $200,000 for his pain and suffering and then Marie state him as a Supreme Court Associate Justice? You really think that's going to make George Weah do anything? You really think that? There's something wrong with you? When you sat down in a damn country, Kabina Janet was being impeached. Kabina Janet himself did not do shit. He didn't organize his people, his kinsmen, his community, the Madingo people. They didn't stand up. The rest of the people in the country didn't stand up. And today you say you want to, you, you celebrate anything? You're not worth the salt. You're not worth the salt. You are not worth the salt. What more do you need to see before you stand up? The police killed one man in America, George Floyd. For many, many weeks, hundreds of thousands of Americans across this country protested until they saw a significant amount of change in the system. From Minnesota to Georgia to California, you name it, there were a lot of reforms that were given birth to as a result of the George Floyd protests. What more do you want to see before you stand up? You good for nothing, weaklings and cowards. 
You know, that woman said, oh, and, and, and yet I hear the Jesus, I was so damn offended that what we do to expose the evil these people commit and you call that G's? That's G's? That Lilai, innocent Lilai is being charged with murder? And you're sitting out there and you think it's okay? And you call that G's? That the real murderers are going to go free? And you think that's okay? You call that G's? And our opposition people are sitting out in Liberia instead of being in America to lobby, and you call that G's? And that Georgia is trying to insert 150 seditions in the Liberia National Police through the back door. You call that G's to get them guns? You call that G's? Is that how you see what we do? G's? Am I some freaking gossip column providing you G's? Are you that damn stupid and incorrigible and irredeemable? I will cuss you up this morning. The Liberian people sicken me. You ain't worth shit. And this includes everybody. Including the people you look up to as your gods. By now, the people who want to be the next president of Liberia should be in Washington, D.C. They should be making their case to congressmen on Capitol Hill and calling for the Americans to investigate what's happening in the country and calling for the Americans to bring targeted sanctions against the likes of McGill, against the likes of Koji, against the likes of Samuel Twer. The reasons for doing that are too many. But you're all sitting now in Liberia and you're waiting for 2023 to go to elections to remove George Weah. Are you that stupid? Answer my question. And they don't like to hear me say this, but I will tell them, I am so disappointed in the Liberian people. This includes all of them. You don't walk me getting up in the morning, coming to sit down here and waste my time talking. You don't want shit. You ain't want it. Mind my word. November 16th is coming. We call a protest. The reasons for the protest are too many. You got three boys missing. Three boys. People's children missing. See, Moses looks like he's protected by the government people. Well, this is how it appears to me. Mm -hmm. See, Moses looks like he is protected. Somebody said, because you're not talking about what the hell do you want me to do? How many times do I talk about the damn thing? Do you not know three boys are missing? What more should I say? The people of the family call a protest. How many of you are there? You. How many of you are there? A handful of you. Just a handful of people were there. And, and when a handful of people go for a protest, the police will overpower them. Yes. Whenever a handful of people go to a protest, they have no power. Mm -hmm. The police will, look what that police guy did. Joshua Dury. That's, that's his name. The police guy who slapped the journalist. He is unit 140. Just a handful of you. Two of your colleagues, Abbott Peters and Gifty Lama, got murdered in cold blood. What did you do? You did nothing. You did nothing. Then George Van Buto got murdered. You carry your asses to work every day as if nothing has happened. What kind of people are these? Achi Popo said he said, I blaze the next morning those that you are putting. Oh, hey, fellow workers, to the Capitol building, I mean, to the Temple of Justice, carry the asses to work. Yeah. No solidarity. You don't stand up for shit. This is the last protest the COP is calling. As chairman of the COP. We will not, I as chairman, will not push for us to call for any protest again. If you don't come out in your tens of thousands and stay on the streets until we see change, 
We are not going to call another protest. As chairman of the COP, I'm telling you, I will put my foot down. I'm not going to give myself the headache of leading and organizing another protest. It is, it is not worth it. It is not worth it. Somebody asked, oh, Kassan, we don't hear you talk much about the three boys. How many times do you want me to talk about it? The family said they were calling a protest. How many of you went there? How many of you went to the protest? Hmm? Tell me, folks. How many of you took yourselves to join with the family in solidarity to protest yesterday? In Mr. Blanco. In the diaspora, saying that, oh, because we are in the diaspora, we get, we get, we get heavy anyway. You in the diaspora are the ones supporting people down here. You have influence on them. Yeah, you pay their rent, you buy them food, you do everything for them. You in the diaspora, of course, you know what you do. You support their laziness. Sure. They don't care. They just sit out there. They all complain. You complain. They complain. They, they don't do anything. Huh? Yesterday, the family went to protest. They beat them up. The police dragged them and took them all away in no time. These people are hurting. They can't see their children. Huh? Three young men gone missing. See, Moses is walking around free. I'm not saying he murdered them, but he is not under any pressure from the government. They don't seem to even care to investigate. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. What more? What is going to make Liberians wake up like Nigerians? What is going to make Liberians wake up like Malians? What will make you wake up like the Sudanese people? What is going to make you wake up? I want you to please tell me. What will Joshua have to do to you for you to get angry enough to wake up and stand up and fight? It is not worth it, man. It is not worth it. All this talking here, we talk, it's not worth it. It is not worth it. I have no more faith in the work that we do. You know, when you get to a point where you don't believe that what you're doing has any impact, it's a waste of time. I have no faith in the work that we do. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I don't believe in what I do anymore. I don't. I'm telling you the truth. I do not believe in what I do anymore. I've been doing this for eight years, going on nine years, and for the first time, I don't believe in this anymore. No more. Absolutely no more. Yesterday, I finally spoke to one of the people involved with Mariah Lukin. This Mariah Lukin woman sold 550 Liberian children. She has been in as uh, she has been found guilty. They have not sentenced her yet. She's still hanging around. Hmm. While the woman was being prosecuted for trafficking 550 Liberian children and selling selling them under the guise of doing adoption, she started a club, a sushi club called Circle of Life Fellowship. She told her members. The minimum is $500 per hand. You know how to do susu. You can take one hand. Each hand is $500 USD. Or you can take two hands. That's $1,000. And then she says, the way to do it is, look, librarians are interesting people. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you this. Librarians are interesting people. Like, librarians are all the same, no matter where, where they live in the world. You can treat them whatever way they will never stand up for themselves. Mariah Lucan, Started a susu club. 580 people came and joined. The way to do it is you bring, you, you take one hand, then you bring two other people. And she tells you that in four to six weeks, you will eat 
3,000. You could have got hundreds of thousands of US dollars you ate from them. So they called me. Several of them called me. I spoke to one of them yes, yesterday. Let me tell you what I got to tell them. You all can go to hell. All of you who don't susu organized by a woman who sold 550 children who was standing trial for trafficking people's children, you who went and joined her susu, you can kiss my ass. Because you are stupid people. You are the ones who encourage bad behavior. What the, these people know The Mariah Lucan is a criminal. That she sold people's children. Yet they ignore the facts. And they went and joined her susu. And then they're calling me. I'm going to say this to you. You can kiss my ass. This morning, I'm too angry. This is the same thing we talk about. You encourage bad behavior in the country all the time. People do wrong. And you keep supporting them. You are a bunch of stupid people. You can kiss my royal ass. I ain't give a damn about y'all. I, I, I rather talk about the three boys that are missing and the people who are getting murdered and innocent Lila who, who's been charged with murder be simply because she was loving to uh, Yeshua then to talk about you stupid people. You took all that damn money and gave it to that woman and the woman can sell people children for money. That your money you want to go get her then you can't call me oh God sir. Please talk for all, and the woman say our money were well, 580. They send me some of their, their financial report. The woman ate over 300,000 US on them. But in a high Monrovia. Then they, uh, they tell me all the food. Because the woman gets sweet more, you damn stupid. She that sweet more, you just stupid. You're trying to justify your stupidity or make excuse for your stupidity, but you are just damn stupid. That's what it is. Can't talk about the woman gets three more. The woman did that. Then. I'm talking shit for you. Y'all can go to hell. Y'all gonna get Mariah looking more money. Who he know that that woman been stealing people, that, that been selling people children? Who he know that woman? Who he know that Mariah looking been selling people children? You hear all that news about the woman? The woman go start a club, uh, 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 a circle of life fellowship. Circle of scam fellowship. Then let me come to the people in America. During the corona time, when people are financially stressed, some Liberians gotta be at the form all kind of clubs. My sister, in, in, in what a play, they try to encourage him to join that club. Everybody says, oh, join the club, join the club. You will make money because I join the club. I ain't join that damn club. They not eat their money. Boy, I'm talking about thousands and thousands of people combined in several of the clubs. And do you know what I know? I got personal friends, people close to me, who are members of the club, whose money they ate. When you ask them, oh, but what they will do? They seem attitude. They seem Liberian attitude all over the place. Look, Donald Trump started a university, a 419 scan thing called Trump University. He collected money from people, and when they, when the people found out later on that it was not a real university, you know what they did? They came together to file a class action suit. They went to the government and complained. They sued Donald Trump. Trump was made to settle those people, to pay them millions and millions of dollars in settlement. Liberian people, they eat their money. I know the clubs. I know some of the people who are who organize these clubs here in America. Yesterday I was thinking about it. I said, what kind of human beings are these? The people, the, the people eat your money in America. The greatest country on the face of the earth where you can get justice. And you sit and then you can't do shit. Coronavirus time. Somebody organized a stupid club to tell you, put your money inside. They eat your money. And you sit and then you can't do nothing in America. I mean, Liberians are just a special bunch of people. And they got some of the people there. Brother, I will start calling the names of the people who organize these clubs in America that ate the people money. 
I want the names. We, we, I, I, I just want to expose them. Some of these people act like they love Liberia or they believe in integrity or this or that. They organize this club. They ate the people money here in America. I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of U.S. dollars, Wakai. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's what they ate, Wakai. In America. I mean, look, <laughs> I was under pressure to join the damn thing. Oh, they are. The, the money is good. They'll they, they, they pay money. This is a, mm. My man, like library man, they ate the money now. They say now they say, oh, but what, what will do? Then they came back. One of one of the clubs I know, they came back to the members and they, and they said, oh, you know, uh, we're trying to make some uh, adjustment. They finished eating the five money. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh. They finished eating the five money. Oh. Then they came out and said, oh, we're trying to make some adjustment. We, 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 we're trying to start. We're trying to resuscitate the club. They have not paid the people. Then they say they're trying to resuscitate the club. They tell the people, say, y'all give us some more money. We, 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 we're trying to new. Look, I mean, look, 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 look. I mean, Liberian people, you're just a special bunch of people, man. No. Man, you're just, man no, 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 no. You are just a special bunch of people. You are just a special. No matter where you are in the world, you are just a special bunch of people. In America, somebody eat your money on our street, and you sit down there, you don't do nothing. Eh? Somebody are telling me don't control my anger. I ain't control my anger. I'm frustrated. It's, it's not anger. I'm frustrated. Brother, my fire today. I'm frustrated, my brother. I no longer believe in the work that we do. I don't believe in this shit no more. What difference is it making that tens of thousands of you will listen to what I have to say, but yet nothing happens? I, I did a podcast yesterday afternoon. 42,000 people have seen it the day before yesterday. 42,000 people. When I was doing that, I had 3,500 people watching live. But to what extent? What's the impact? What's the effect? That I'm the, I'm the only Liberian who can get that many people to watch me? So what? That 3,500, 3,600, up to 4,000 people can watch me live? So what? That I, my views will rack up tens of thousands of views. So what? What difference? It's useless. It's useless. When you get to the point where you no longer believe in what you do, it's a problem. I no longer believe in this. It's a waste of my time. It's a waste of my time. I have no faith. I have no faith. I have no faith in the Liberian people. I have no faith in the opposition. I have no faith in the work that I do. None whatsoever. No faith. Mariah Lugan is going to go free after eating hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm going to just get anyone of y'all con contact me again. So I'll get a more money. Brother Aaronella, happy birthday to you, bro. Yesterday you celebrated your birthday. Aaron is one of the hardest working and most committed Liberians I know. He, he handles all of our IT solutions and IT stuff for the COP. Uh, he and Brother uh, Claude Soma, they built our website, Aaron Meetings, the site. All our social media page, pages, accounts, he handles them. Happy birthday to you, a good friend, a real friend. And Madam Julia Lily Lackner of Minnesota. Yesterday was your birthday, your big supporter. Uh, happy belated birthday to you, Julia Lily Lackner of Minnesota. Happy birthday to you. Uh, we're going to go to the phone lines and take some calls there. I don't want anybody trying to console me. I don't want that. I will not appreciate it. If you try to do it, I'm just going to get off this show this morning. I'm not in a good mood. 
Don't call this show and try to tell me, say, cause I'll hang in there, hold on there. I don't want that. Don't call here and try to console me. I don't need you to console me. I'm very frust frustrated. The country is going downhill. We're going back to the days of 1980. The days of, of the 80s. The dark days. We're going back the day to the days of Charles Taylor. People getting mis mysteriously killed. Massive looting. Nothing happening. We're going back to those days. I don't want anybody trying to console me. I don't want that. Not even my dead mother, Sarah Burton. Just leave me the hell alone. Because I'm at this point where I could just get off this show and then we'll take my rest. It's just sad. It's just sad. That we'll sit down here and we'll lie a bunch of idiots to destroy our country like this. And all we do is talk, 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 talk. Everybody, even some of the people you see who don't talk about it on Facebook, they are talking about it in their homes. They are in their homes. They are talking about it. Oh, look at it. They, they are with their friends right now talking about the fact that they can't get like million dollars in the, in the bench or anywhere. Sure. They are talking about the fact that people are getting killed left and right. They are talking about the fact that the, the, the time million dollars for the food distribution is gone. It's gone. They are talking about it. But nobody will stand up. When people stand up in, in Nigeria, then they are posting. We stand with Nigerians. We are in solidarity with Nigerians. When people are protesting in Sudan, there are some people in our country, they are too good to protest. But they always stay in solidarity with foreigners when they are protesting. When the people of Lebanon stood up to protest over the government's plan to, to levy a tax or a surcharge on internet calls, on WhatsApp calls, Liberians said, oh man, these are the most beautiful protests we've ever seen. Lebanese playing music on the street. They're having a fun time. They're dancing. They're having fun. They said, we've never seen that before. They were loving it. They were posting left and right. But in their own country, they would never stand up to do shit. It's just heartbreaking. It's just heartbreaking. It's just heartbreaking. Let me tell you what I know before we go to the phone lines and take calls. George Weir, Nathaniel McGill, Samuel Twer, Jefferson Koji, Finda Bono, and all the people close to them, they have come to the conclusion that they are unpopular, that their chances of winning an election are extremely small and insignificant that they have lost control of the narrative that even though they are the government but we set the tune that they don't control public opinion public opinion has against them has reached a point where they cannot reverse it and so here is what they have decided to do. Let's just steal as much as we can. Let's just do absolutely anything necessary to keep ourselves in power. It includes killing people in cold blood if we must. Let's do whatever we can to protect, to protect ourselves. Let's break the damn election. If they try to, pro to protest, we'll beat them, we'll shoot them, and they will get scared. That is what the CDC government has concluded. That is what they have concluded. Let's do whatever we can to protect ourselves. Whatever we can to protect ourselves. Yeah. And we're not going to sit down here and let them take us from power. They are weak. They will not do anything. Their leaders are weak. And so we'll just sit down here and do, we'll just do whatever we have to do. Murder people if we must. Whatever we must do, we will do it. That is what the CDC people have, this, have decided. 
That's, that's it. That's what they have decided. And so, I want you to prepare yourselves for this. They have reached a point where they know that they can't make it. So they, they're not going to try to change. They're not going to try to make amends, to make concessions. They, they, they're going to use brute force, tactics of intimidation, suppression, anything, absolutely anything to stay in power. That's their plan. Let's take some calls there, boy. Let's go to the phone lines. That is their plan. The reason the point where they know, hey, you know what, my man, we can't win free and fair election. They will wreck the election in December. I'm not telling you don't vote. Go and vote over one million. Go out and vote. There is no way they can win more than three, four seats on December 8th. Absolutely no way. But they will do whatever they can to break the election, particularly in Montserrat County. And you know what they know? They know that the Liberian people will never stand up when they break the election. They know it and they are right. They know it all too well that you, the people, will never stand up. So, that's what they will do. Let's go to the, to the phone lines. They will never stand up. The people know you so well. You will never come out in your tens of thousands and go and broad protest. By the time they shoot here, guys, they're all going to run away. They know you too well. That is their plan. Let's take some calls, okay? 0770-102-102-086-010383-055-102-102 and the WhatsApp number is plus 231-86-241-71. Now take uh, somebody from this angle here. Good morning. Your name where you calling us from? Hi, good morning. This is Maurice. I'm calling from Pennsylvania. President Binia, welcome, my brother. Hey, uh, I just want to uh, tell Costa thank you and I agree with him, actually. I mean, it's so frustrating the work that you're doing, especially when people are not responding to, you know. But I just want to make, uh, I just want to come into the social business you're talking about. I know a lady, Costa, her name is uh, Yatoya Blackson. Her Facebook name is Na Odako. She, she from a club, collecting people money, I want to fix it. Over four days of people in America are from different countries. That lady is still here. She and her husband and three other friends. I know all of them names. Can you imagine that? And what have the people done to them? The people whose money they collected, my dear friend? No, you hang up a lama already. So yeah, nothing. No, no, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Pedro. Our leader. My name is Noah Southgate. Uh, like you said, no one should console you this morning. I have not come or neither have I called to console you, as you have said. But one thing I knew, everything you said this morning is 100% real. But again, let you like to put it, you are frustrated. We all are frustrated, as you are, so are we, your supporters. But one thing I want you to know, your efforts have not been in vain. Please know this. It is because of the effort that made for the CDC North Montreal. The few months you spent in, I mean, on the ground here, on the podcast show, when our Roots FM has not been shut down, even though, like you said, the same media way of thinking has got Roots FM being out of the, the, the airway today. Nothing has been done by any of us or any of our leaders because of the few you make way of thinking. But again, your presence here, may today, uh, GDC has lost their one beautiful monster rather than the terrorist. So, I can, I can go on needing a lot of football results that have done out of what you're doing. So, I know you're saying it out of frustration. But let me say this for you. Look, I can assure you. The only thing for which the two protests that we had, the government did not be on, because you two leaders, you made some error. You kept on telling us that we should be peaceful. And you know the kind of people we're fighting? They don't understand diplomacy. They don't understand civility. What they understand is radicalism. So I only warn you, as you sit over there, your voice is the power. Please institute this mandate. Make sure that this mandate is given, that when we go over there on Monday, which I am prepared for going today, my mobilization starts for the protest immediately in the number two. When we shall have one day on Monday, no matter how the fire is here, no matter how the fire is here, we should.
should not have kept. Let the people know we should not. And we should not. Let me tell you something. We should, can't we should not be peaceful. We should not be peaceful. But there's too much people for that people for that. You think today if the people were to, I mean, if the people of Nigeria would have imported the Buddha body in the kind of result, like the cave of America there when you spoke of drug law, if the Americans were peaceful, if they were, diplom they were diplomatic, you think today in America, the kind of uh, system that has been put into place to, uh, to uh, that abroad, the kind of transformation about the death of drug law, you think the people would have experienced it? No. Just this protest, let us now come to the realization that we don't need peaceful protest yet. We must be radical when the situation is still for radicality. Thank you. God oh, bless you. Thank you so much, Loazao Gibson. The phone lines are still open, coming up 077 102 102, uh, 086 010383, 555 102 102, and the WhatsApp number is plus 231. The country, the country, the country bow. But we'll see. Uh, November 16th is Monday. We are assembling at the uh, Capitol building. What's well, well, see, the word has spread. Today we're supposed to do a press conference to re-echo. We'll see what other 10,000 or 15,000 people will, come, will, will, will show up. Or you will sit at home and you will say, oh, let's watch it on social media. Yeah, or I'm, 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 I'm too good to pro protest. Yeah, I'm very proud of Welcome, buddy. Yeah, we, 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 I'm talking about today, you know, we're going to have and that's why we all have we all buy the same idea. You can't be talking for people, right? Then they say buy, they close their door, they say more money, they do it, they, they die. So they so we're not like one day inshallah we'll be on the street. We want to we'll put them all right, we want to put them for the progress of this country, and we want to put them for the development of this country. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the people are becoming emboldened. The book man can say emboldened. You know what emboldened means? The man killed one person, you not told nothing. He killed two people, you not told nothing. He said, oh, by the way, the people did not care when I kill. Then he killed three people, you not told. Then, ah. Then he said, okay, but I can continue killing people. That is what important means. They see two, two million, you not do nothing. Then they see 10 million. Then they see 25 million. The man be 44 units in a compound, you not do nothing. He be 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 brave. Oh, writing all to nine street down. He be new one. You you, yeah. you you not do nothing. Yeah. They call it emboldened. Then they say, oh, but you know like, there is nothing I can't do. Then he just start doing anything. Anything. This is why CDC has reached the government. They are emboldened. Now you know what they're preparing. We'll see. We'll steal the election. Mm -hmm. The people stupid. We'll steal. We'll steal the election from there. They will not do nothing. They will not do nothing. They can still charge that bill for food, there's a vision. What did you do? Nothing. The people increase the price of gas by 30 cents. They say they use the donate to generate the 10 million to pay back to the IMF. They borrow 50 million in your country's name. They added 30 cents on gas price. So they say they can raise that money to pay back the, 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 the 50 million they borrow. They borrow the money in your name. They add a tennis on gas plant, then they turn around, they eat the food, they eat the rest money. Then you not do nothing. You not do nothing. Jeff, what did they must do now before you do something? What did they must do now? Please tell me, what did the like people waiting for? For draw, we have to do to you before you can stand up. Oh, for the thoughts die mysteriously. You not, you not, you not do nothing. Then you look at the people I'm gonna be fighting for. What he also the money for? I raised my leg, I went to Liberia for two different protests. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that? You plenty. They want advantage, your guy, you're plenty. Millions of people, they're suffering, y'all. You mean 100,000 people can't stand up and, 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 and drag the man? And so we are seeing 100,000 people, 20 or 50,000 people. You know what the man will do? The man will get scared. There is nothing he will not, he will not do. The man is afraid of one thing, and that one thing is protest. And you get that weapon, you can't use it. The man get a weapon, he's using it. You get a weapon which is protest, you can't use it. You sit down there, you say, 
the man will, will be the man in election. The man will lead power. Joe, we have a lead power in 2023. You are saying that. You will see how December election will load at the time you know what a job you leave power in 2023. Let me say something that we all have been talking privately, but we need to now talk it in, in public. We know in a free and fair election on December 8th, Darius Dillon will destroy Thomas Fana because the Liberian people will vote massively for Darius Dillon. But here is what I know. The CDC will break the election. The question is, and I've been asking this question, I've asked Dillon this question, I've asked many people this question. What are we prepared to do when they break the election? That is the question I'm asking this morning to our political leaders and all. What are you prepared to do when the people steal the election? Let's go back to the phone line, brother. Let's see some more. Yeah, but first, I will just issue another press release. That's all we have noted for. Yeah. They will steal the election. That is their plan. What are you prepared to do? Let's go back to the lines, brother. We have a guest. We, we, we will take for a few minutes of our time. They will still see the election. Yeah, go ahead. Ellen Sherry. Yes. Thank you for the recognition. This is Ellen Sherry. I'm going to see you before. Father, I don't have federal fee and I'm not feeling this morning. But I'm in September. I'm doing people who come out on Monday. Trust me, federal. Yeah, yeah, I will see you. Look, they encourage more like the way. We will get on the street that day. I think people are hungry, people are suffering. You go to the bank, you can't get money. Nothing they put in, too much money. You go for 5,000. Everything they will pay you, they give you 5,000. They only give you 2,000, 5,000. Everything will be too much money. They fall, they don't let people pray. They will only come on fire and see this love they call God. Like when people are hungry, see a secret killing going on around. So people will get in the street that day. Trust me. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you know what I think? After they steal the election, our people that will issue press releases, yeah. they will call the international community to, 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 to step in, and then after one week, two weeks, it will die. Sure. Then they will say, for the sake of peace, we will just accept it and move forward and focus on 2023. 20, 20, my words, yeah. George Weir yeah. has already designed a whole plan to steal the election. Good morning, welcome. You'll be sitting down there, you'll be waiting.
<laughs> Thank you, Martina. Thank you, come on. Let me say something to you. Folks, listen to this. At this point, the stage where I am now, I am prepared to support anything. Absolutely anything. I will never call on anybody here to be peaceful, to be meek. Never. Why I may not tell you, say, go burn this, go burn that, go, no. But I will not call on anybody to be peaceful. I want to make myself very, very clear. The point at which we are, the things that these people are doing to us, I am not against anything. I can hear people playing bad and go to the door. Yeah, I will not talk inside. That's the stage where I am now. You know, you see, this is where I understand why the war came. I understand why people felt the need to bring a war. When you make certain people, when you make the people in the country this miserable and this angry, things that they normally would not support, they will support it. Boga, let, me, let, me, let me be honest with you. Yeah. Boga, there are sometimes you say, but me, and I ought to do that thing, and I ought to be part of that kind of thing. But Boga, if you really push people, the things the people thought they would not be able to be a part of, they can find themselves in the thick of it. That is where I am now. There is no plan against George Weir that I will be against. No plan against Nathaniel McGill or Samuel Twain that I will say, oh, forget it, don't do that. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Everything and anything is necessary at this stage. Let me repeat myself. Everything and anything is necessary. Even if I am not a part of it, I give it my moral support. Let me repeat myself. Anything and everything that will make these guys stop what they're doing to our people, I give them my moral support. And I got to go preach peace no more. No more Martin Luther King style. We'll take on the Nelson Mandela style and the Malcolm X style. Because that is a situation we are dealing with. Let's go back to the lines and take some more calls. Okay? We'll take five more calls and we'll take our guest. Anything and everything against them, I am in support. I just want to go on the record and say that. Mm. Yeah. That's the point where I am now. That is where I am now. Let's take Pangomo camera. Pangomo, good morning.
quickly. Uh, let me see if I can take this person. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, where are you calling from? I remain as a homo salmon, Mohammed, to say, call him a Magali community. Okay, welcome, Mohammed. Yeah. Good morning to, to Bola A. Kamara and good morning to our hero. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my concern has to do with, with the rating of the election. Mm -hmm. we, we are all alike that any attempt, any attempt to try to rate the election, they will see the wrong. They don't talk. They don't 
chances of re-election in 2023 are doomed. Sure. Now he knows that they cannot win. But here is his point. If I cannot win, then we must steal it. Because if we don't steal it, then we cannot make an argument that we will win election in 2023. Mm -hmm. So that is why we are will steal it. Now, the reason why we are will be brave to steal it is because of one thing. We are knows you Liberian people are not worth the salt. Mm -hmm. If we are was afraid of you, the Liberian people, we are would not try to steal an election. For the international community, we are doesn't give a damn. In this country, you had a president Trump who didn't care about Trump never visited Africa once. He called African countries shit woke, shit -woke countries. And it's true. We are shit -woke countries. Especially for like for like for Liberia. That is true. That is the one thing I agree, I, I agree with Trump on. That is true. So, elections are going to be the same election December 8th. We are knows that if he does not steal the election, he is finished. 
Et l'élément, il va rester. Mais il va rester le fou à Oda, of Hunger. So I must see the fool. And the reason why he must see the fool is because he knows that if I see the fool, what will he do to me? Nothing. The man knows that you will do nothing. He knows very well that you will do nothing, that you are weak. So he will steal the election and he knows that you will do nothing. No, all I think he's talking, no, I trust you. I trust you. I trust Mohammed Corner. I trust tons of you. But for the general Liberian population, I don't trust them. I do not trust the general Liberian population. We are knows that he has no choice. Look, Aya, let me think something. You know how you, you face a reality? The reality of we are is if I don't steal the December election, particularly Montreal County, I'm finished. I am totally finished. I will not be able to make the argument that I will win in 2023. So I must steal the election. That is why we are is going to steal the election. We are possible so we may have a girlfriend, the chair of the election commission, uh, the director Lansana Brown or Brown Lansana. Then he take Abache girlfriend Josephine Kouge. He remember uh, that. Then he put Tipla Reef there. He put his plan is to steal the election. That's his plan. He wants to steal the election. So all George Weir is planning to do is steal an election in order to be able to make the argument that he can win an election in 2023. And he knows this. He knows this. That the Liberian people will do nothing. We are knows that one too well. That you, the Liberian people, you will do nothing. Because first of all, your political leaders are not brave to lead a protest. No! Your political leaders are not brave to lead a protest. Let's be honest. Let's face it. They are our political leaders. But they are not brave. They are not the Bobby Wine from Uganda. They are not like... No! They cannot lead protest. They are not like Selu Diallo from Guinea. They are not like the, the opposition leader in the Ivory Coast. Your political leaders cannot lead a protest. Jawia knows that very, very well. The only people who can lead protest like Brother Jawia know that COP, COP, Heron Costa and his people on the front line when I'm in the country. All other than that, Jawia know that the people there, no disrespect to them, but the truth is, we are knows that Joe Baga will not lead a protest. Alex Gomez will not lead a protest. Better than you will not lead a protest. Yomli will not lead a protest. You think Jawia ain't know that? Let me ask you. If you don't protest, what else do you do? You go to the Supreme Court? So, somebody can say, Costa, let protest, Costa, let protest. But when you don't protest, what else do you do? Yo, please tell me, what do we do? What do you do if you don't protest? Before we take our guest, Walker, I just want somebody to tell me, what do you do? Let's take three, three more calls there. Your call and tell me what we should do if not pro protest. You go to the court, the Supreme Court ruin for all the men. The CPP went to the court the other day. What did the court do to them? The court rejected, rejected their appeal or their petition to mandate the election commission to clean the voter roll. You go to the court, nothing. Where do you go? You go to the international community, nothing. Where do you where do you go? Mommy, take three calls. I want to hear the approval tell me what is the alternative? What do you do? You say that you complete. That's it. Take three calls. Of Let them tell me. Let them say, Costa, you are wrong. Protest is not the only way out. Please tell me. George Weir knows this. That the leaders you have will not lead a protest. Mm -mm. They will issue a press release. He knows very well. When I say it, they say I'm attacking the opposition. It is the truth. George Weir knows that the leaders you have in the opposition will never lead a protest. They will not do that. They rather issue a press release or call a press conference. Let's take three three calls. Yeah. Zero seven seven zero one oh two one oh two. Let's take this press in. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. What's up? So good morning. Mr. 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 Conan, good morning. Nice good morning. How are you? I'm good. Uh, you ask a question, if you can't put it, what do you do? If you can't put it, just accept being cheated. Thank you. That's it. Mm. All right. Let's take two 
Marcos, what do you do? What other option do you have? What other avenue of recourse or redress do you have? You can't go to the court. The court will not rule your favor. The court will not even agree to listen to your, to your, to your case. So what do you do? Let's take some more calls. Okay. Two more. Then we'll take our guest. I'm not going to cause the opposition leader because they will say cause are causing us. But I'm just saying. Okay, thank you. What do you do if the man cheats the election? Because the man, they, because, because they think it's simple. The man got to us, the man got to see the election. Look, yeah, 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 you understand the situation we are facing. We are does not have a choice. We are must steal the election. So we are, it's the whole thing set to steal the election. It's set. When, you all see, when they ready to call the election result, those boys will put people on the street, they will put their CDs they will get them guns, they will do all kinds of things. They will do whatever it takes to steal the election. What do we do? Let's take the last one. Let's take this person. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you are hundred percent right. There, there is no other alternative uh, right now. Put that is the way I will bear uh, because we'll go at the top and put the people will go in the interest of the government. So put that is the only way out. That's the only alternative. There's no opposition leader can carry that. This is the alternative out of the resting press conferences. Thank you so much. Now, folks, there you have it. And Monday, November 16th. Let me say this to you before we go and take our guests. And I'll tell and I will and I'll keep telling you this until we go to November 16th, Monday for the COP protest. And we're supposed to gather at the Capitol building. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. When John Weir sees that because Henry Costa is not on the ground and thousands of you don't show up, the government will say, oh, we see. If you don't show up November 16, the government will say, you, the Liberian people, are very happy with the conditions in the country. And that is why you are not protesting. They, they will say, because the Liberian people have Realized that they were being misled by Costa and the COP. That's that's why they didn't they didn't turn up. That's what they will say. But when they see you in your thousands, they will get scared. Let me repeat myself. When they see you in your thousands on Monday, they will get scared of what might happen November. I mean December eighth after the election. You think? November 16, we just chose that date because we wanted to choose it. We want to send a message to John Weir that if you steal the election December 8th, this is what we will do. It is not if. We are will steal the election. We have to ensure that we don't let him steal it. He plans to steal it. He's going to steal it. We have to ensure that he does not steal it. If they see that you don't turn out on November 16th, Monday, in your thousands and thousands, you better spread that word to people and get them to come out. We always say, oh, you are here the government. The government will say, but the, the COP dead. The Liberian people don't want to protest. In fact, they don't, the, the, the people don't believe in the message of the COP anymore. That is what they will say. That is what the government will say. It will also send a message to them that hey, we can go ahead and steal the election on December 8th, and they will they will do nothing. That's what the government will do. So if you think December 8th is to benefit Costa, you are mistaken. December 8th is to protest about the killings in the country, the three missing boys, the 30 million dollars for the food distribution that we are stole. It's so many things. That's what December 8th is for. I mean, uh, uh, no, November 16th is for. And is to send a message to we are what we will do on December 8th after 
when he attempts to steal the election. That's it. Take up a phone. Stay to your home and watch it on Facebook. Yeah? Stay to your home and watch it on Facebook. Don't come out. Complete in your corner, in your bedroom, or where your friend is. If a hot thing's buying the country, you can't find like right now. You can't do the one. Keep talking. Keep mumbling to your stories to yourselves. You do good to protest. Yeah, stay there. Let, let we are destroy the country completely. Stay there. That's what you should do. Let's go take our guest. Uh, okay. We have a young lady we're going to take. She has a foundation. A charity um, found, foundation. She does amazing work. We're going to give her a few minutes of our time this morning to just hear her talk about her work and, of course, how you can contribute if you want to contribute to her work. Good good morning. Wilsina? Good morning. How are you doing? Welcome. Hello. Yes, good morning and welcome. My dear, I can hear you loud and clear. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who am I speaking with? This is Henry Costa. You are live on the Costa show. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Right, how are you? Yes, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well, my dear. Welcome. Uh, Wilsina Wilson, is that your phone correct name? Yes, Wilsina. Peace, Wilson. Thank you. Now, Wilsina, we... We're giving you a, a little bit of our time this morning on the, sh on the show. You have thousands of people listening to you, so make the most use of it. Tell us about your organization. Tell us where you're based, and tell us about your organization and what it is you do and why you why you on the show this morning. Please, let's just keep it very, very straight to the to the point. Definitely, I I got it down. Um, thank you so much, Ralph. For um, uh, thank you, Mr. Costa, for letting me to come on the show this morning. And uh, uh, my name again is Rosina Peace Wilson, and founder is currently CEO of Penny Wall Foundation. We're currently located in Liberia, and uh, that's where we have our headquarters. Other than that, we don't have anywhere else, but we're trying to spread out as much as possible. And really what I wanted to bring across is first let me get um, later to know who Penny World Foundation is. Penny World Foundation, um, three things that push us to start a Penny World Foundation. Well, I'm from a background where my father is a middle class, uh, a middle class citizen and college university graduate and my mother is a high school dropout and so i have lived between two worlds where i've seen when my uh, living with my father i'm able to go to school and you know live good decent life and then when i look at my sisters from my mother's side they're unable to get proper education or even be able to go to to the least school possible because my mom don't have it. And so that's the first thing, like, that's that's the one thing that, you, you know, been in my head all this time when I look at my sisters, I have pity on them. Like, I want to do something one day that, you know, they can look back on and feel better that, hey, we have education or there's education now for other children and things like that. And the second thing is, like, being fortunate to live with my father and stepmom, we had the opportunity to come abroad to the U.S. And so coming here, we, my eyes got opened up to um, the American concept of no child left behind, and which was something like I already been thinking about. So it was like, hey, it's time to like look at this concept and try to study and take it to Liberia. And so that's that's where it actually started from. And then um, after a while, after I graduated high school, 
I usually when I miss home, when I miss being home, I try to watch like YouTube videos and try to get connected to like European um, development or just comedy. I just watch something to get connected. And so I came across a video where uh, a parent or a child is being put out of school for five US dollars. So, you know, that kind of like set pain in my heart, like, because in America here, we throw like pennies away all the time. We like, we don't have any value for pennies. Mm -hmm. And so, sorry. No, 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 go, go ahead. I'm listening to you. Yeah, so we throw one pennies away and penny in the West here is the smallest amount of I'm sorry. Dollars liberty. That's what. And so, like, we throwing them away being put out of school for five dollars. And I just felt so upset about it, or like, I felt heartbroken. And you know, do something about it. And I prayed and contacted, like, tried to talk about it to people that would be interested. And so I ended up talking to one of my friend, a good friend from Liberia, and the co-founder of Penny World Foundation. And we reached there as over Mr. Rich and he got excited about it and he was like, it's a really good dream and I can go down here and get forward. And so I'm like, okay, no problem. That would be really great. And I allow him to, like, we started working together and then putting plans together. We work now for like two years. Um, we started the IJK in 2016, we started distribution in 2017, and 2019 we did another distribution. I would have helped 300 kids, um, about 300 kids. And we're hoping to help 500 students, so... So how do you help them exactly? So really we try, the goal for Finney was foundational, uh, we, I mean, for Penny World Foundation is to keep out of school with no worry. So, really, we try to remove the, the minimal burden as much as I can from when I school my serious, like, stick to and stuff, children. And, and then, like, I distribute it. The first time we did, like, 60 seconds, then then last the teacher we did 150 students so 200 and we just give them backpacks and uh, also we give we give back backpacks and little things that help us in school but now we're trying to this year we're including these scholarships so uh, and that program will be launching Penny World Foundation. Okay, uh, 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 was was Sina, thank you very much. Let me ask you how how can people contact you? your line is not very good. I mean, the internet is it's not very good. Your, your is your connection certainly not mine. It's it's yours. Uh, it's it's, it's breaking up. How can people contact you? Uh, how can people contact you to read about what you do and how can they contribute if they want to contribute? Please tell them. If, you, um, if you're in Liberia, you can simply go to GSA Road. I'm going to be getting any better now. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. If you're in Liberia, you can go to GSA Road. Um, at Office in Upper. That's where our headquarters is. And uh, if you're in the U.S., you cash out with Sina Peace Wilson. And all of this information is on our Facebook page. So if if you don't get it right now, you can just visit our Facebook, Spending World Foundation on Facebook. 
And also you can visit our website, um, www.healingworldfoundation.org to find um, that information. So I have done several videos, but it's not like shooting out there, but I'm really excited and grateful to um, the cross that shows to hosting us today to give us that opportunity. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Um, uh, uh, could you call out your phone number, please? That's one easy way people can reach people, if you don't um, mind. My phone number is 515-661-0419. Number, and that's for the U.S., 515 4419 and then uh if you're trying to reach us in like it would be 231 that's mr with that number 231 and again you can always find us on facebook anywhere foundation on facebook just type that in and you'll be any information you want and you can send us a message from there too. And you're based in a, you are in the US, right? Yes, I am in the US, but um, like the penal is based in Liberia. All right, yeah. Thank you very much. Is that uh, th thanks for what you do for people, and I like your inspiration. Uh, Penny Wolf Foundation. So it is spelled P E N N Y. W O R T H? Yes. Okay. Penny Wolf. That means every penny has a wolf. Every penny yes. is important. That's yes. what she, that's the idea behind the name. Yes. Thank yes. you so much, Bosina. Yes. <laughs> yep. That's correct. Um every penny counts. Yes. yes. Every penny counts. Precisely. Now, uh, you know, let's give you let's give you a, a minute to close up. Thanks for uh, coming on the show to talk about your organization, and more importantly, thanks for what you what you do, making a difference in the lives of several Liberian children. Yeah. All right. So, um, thank you so much. Uh, I believe that um, no one can help us, but us really Liberians, if you're a Liberian listening, help us, but us. So we have to fight and put anything that we can to lift our little ones up because we sure, and we all know that we need a better and brighter right now that we're pleading for the young folks. So we need to get it. Nobody can do it for us, but us. So we need to gather together and push forth to get these children um, going to school and in school. So Pennywell is not just there for school, to be there for the catering, like any health care, any, uh, anything that at all will be interrupting that we are going to be there for them. So this is just the beginning we know that we're going to be doing more um, in the future to come. Thank you so much, Wasina, and I wish you best of luck and keep doing what you're doing, and uh, God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you, and God bless you, too, sir. Okay. Uh, that's uh, Miss Wasina Wilson. She uh, lives in Pennsylvania. She's helping raise funds to help uh, under, underprivileged children by providing school materials, essential school school materials like copy books, pens, pencils, book back, I mean backpacks and stuff like that. And the foundation is called the Penny Wolf Foundation. It's P-E-N-N-Y, Penny, as in the penny, the coin, uh, which is the smallest unit of, uh, the smallest unit of um, uh, the U.S. current currency, Penny. And uh, the smallest unit of the of denomination in coins, and 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 um, so she's. Uh, you want to look her up? You can go look her up. 
All right, folks, so this brings us to an end of today's edition of the show. Uh, if you're in Texas, we're coming to Houston this weekend. Uh, I will be there on Friday. We're going to be there from Friday straight to, I think, Monday or Sunday. Yeah, I think straight to Monday. So we're launching the COP uh, uh, Texas chapter uh, in Houston, Texas. And uh, we're going to have a program. I'm gonna, I published the flyer the last time. But just know that we're, 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 we will be in Texas. So if you want to come, we will again publish the information uh, for the event. Thank you so much. And uh, you want to send money to Liberia if you're in Canada. Uh, now you can do so via Sandwave. And uh, very, very cheaply, uh, the cheapest way to send money to, li to Liberia, uh, between $1 to $200, the amount you pay as fee to send the money, it's 3% um, of that amount. Well, 3% of $100 is $3. 3% of $200 is $6. So from $200 to $1,000, $1,000 being the highest, they send the, the daily max. It's uh, one thousand is uh, six dollars. So any amount from two hundred to one thousand dollars is six dollars. You only pay six dollars. I mean, you, you can send nine hundred ninety nine dollars. You pay six dollars. You can send five hundred dollars. You pay six dollars. And you all know that's way 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 cheaper. When the money gets to Liberia, there are two options. If you decide to cash out the money, I recommend strongly you go to the Loom Star Seller MTN uh, branch or to a Loom Star Seller MTN branch to cash out. If you must cash out. Uh, if you choose to keep the money in your mobile in your mobile wallet, your Lone Star Cell mobile wallet and spend it, that's a great idea. You can simply go to make purchases. You can pay tuition. You can do a whole number of things with the money directly in your phone, in your account, your, your mobile wallet. There's another way to do it. If you are with certain commercial banks, uh, they allow you to transfer the money from your mobile from your mobile money account directly to your bank account. That's another way you can you can you can do it. So you can move the money from your from your mobile money account directly to a number of banks. That's what it do to your account with a number of banks. That's somebody told me that uh, two nights ago. He said, "My man, I use the service, and uh, my well, his daughter used the service, and she has a bank account. She simply wired the money straight from her mobile money to her account at no charge whatsoever, and then you can withdraw the money. So you don't have to pay any fee in Liberia at all to cash out. So you can simply move the money directly." To your mobile money and then of course uh you can download when you when you when you download the app if you're in canada in the uk or in the us when you download the app uh you go to the upper right corner there's an icon way up there in the right corner you just click on that it will give you a drop down list of things where it says invite friends and do this enter a promo code in the upper right corner there's an icon right there like the humor that icon you click on that icon and it will tell you what to do. Enter a promo code. You enter the promo code, and then you get yourself a free five dollars. If you're in Canada, you get five Canadian dollars. If you're in the UK, you're gonna get five pounds, and the equivalent of five pounds in 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 dollars is six dollars and fifty cents. So that's what you're gonna you're gonna get. So download Sandwave today and begin sending money to Liberia. I'm giving you ways to avoid paying a fee to cash out you can move the money directly to your bank to your bank account to a number of banks that's what they allow that you can move money from your mobile money account straight to your bank account or you don't have to cash out the money if you want to pay your tuition you want to buy pay your LEC bill uh, there are several places where you can spend the money directly from your mobile money account from, from, from your mobile wallet that is very very important so uh, download the Sendwave app today and begin sending money to Liberia conveniently and very very affordably very secure. It's, it's an American company based in the United States and it operates under the laws of the United States. So you have no reason to be afraid. Thank you so, thank you so much. God bless you all and have yourselves a wonderful blessed day. Bye-bye.